In this video, we're going to set up FreeBSD 8.4 so that we can work through the book by Jeff Joseph Kong, uh, FreeBSD Device Drivers, a guide for the intrepid. This book was first written uh, in 2012. Uh, not a lot has changed, but enough that it's convenient to run it in the 8.4 FreeBSD world. So I'm going to walk through that process and we'll build a simple device driver per his first example. And um, that's the purpose of the video. Um, to, in order to get FreeBSD 8.4, we're going to have to get it from the FTP archive, ftp-archive.freebsd.org, in the slash pub, slash freebsd-archive, slash old releases, slash i386, slash iso, dash images, slash 8.4, slash and that gets us to this directory. I'll include it in the gist, and uh, so you'll have access to it that way as well, um, the link. Um, we're gonna download the DVD image. It's uh, two and a half gigs or so, but um, basically it's the only one that has the packages that, we're, that we might need over time. Um, these others are smaller um, package instances. So we're gonna grab the DVD, we'll save it to a folder. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. But um, get that. And if you have VirtualBox installed, you're all set. So here's the note I'm going to follow. I'll provide this in the gist. Here's the link I was talking about. And um, you can follow the gist. But in the meantime, uh, while I'm making the video, I'm just going to work through this uh, piecemeal and um, see what we come up with. So I'm going to start VirtualBox. I'm going to create a new instance. I'm going to call it Dev train, D E V T R A I N. And uh, we're going to select BSD. And FreeBSD 32 bits already selected, so we're good to go. But make sure that you're doing 32 bit if you grab the 32 bit download, which I did. Select continue. Change this to 2 gigs if you can spare it. 2048. Click continue. Create a, view, a new hard drive now. Yes. Click create. Um, VDI. Is the image type you want just click continue dynamically allocated that's good and 2 gigs is way too small we're gonna go with 20 click create if you're not in the detail view go to details and you should see this click on the general and we'll start actually we'll start with system um, we already set the memory we have our um, settings here we're gonna change in IOA IOA pick and hardware clock and UTC time. Processors, we're gonna to change to two, if you can spare it, and then we'll go to storage. In storage, if you have it, put AHCI, otherwise leave it. Um, pick your empty CD and choose a disk file. Browse to where you've downloaded the 8.4 DVD, one ISO, click it, select OK, and that'll do it for that. Go to network, Click on Advanced, click on Port Forwarding, click on the Add Rule, double click in here and type SSH or something similar. Um, on Host Port, we're going to put it on um, 3232, and we're going to on the guest we're going to make that we're going to map the 3232 to 22, which is the SSH port. That way, on the host, we access it on port 3232. But in reality, it's going to route it through to the to the guest on port 22, which is going to run SSH. Click OK. And that is that. I think that's it. What did I say for the port forward? 3232. We're going to say OK. And start it up. It's going to ask us where to boot it to. Uh, we're going to boot on that DVD. It'll have it in the list. If not, you browse to it. You click start, there's some bug with the VM that makes that not work, seem to work, but it works. Just click cancel now and it'll start. And if you didn't pick HCI, then it will just work when you click start. Now don't wait for this, hit enter. Otherwise, wait 10 seconds and that'll be that. We're in the United States, so that'll be our country. I'm going to click once to get the focus into this window, and then I'm going to press Enter. Uh, sometimes it takes twice. I don't, know, I don't know what that's about, but anyway. 
hit um, arrow down and choose standard for your install type. Read the message if you like. Uh, it's just telling you how you can do this. How it comes into here. We're going to hit A for automatic or A for use entire disk. Q to exit. We're going to pick a standard boot manager. We're going to read a message. Then we're going to come into the, part the disk label editor, which allows you to create partitions. We're going to type A again. It's going to automatically um, set aside some partitions. User's got the major slice. Um, VAR's got a big slice. Swap's got a fairly decent size, uh, slash is pretty small, and temp is uh, a gig. So once you've set the auto defaults there, you can hit Q. We're not going to choose any distributions, so just hit exit. Yes, we want it off the CD, so press enter. Now it says, are you really sure? And we say yes. Starts up a shell on VTY4, which is somewhat challenging to get to. Um, on a real system, you just press Control-Alt-F4. On this system, you might have to press Shift, Command, Function, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, we're done. We click OK. It says, do you want to configure Ethernet? Yes. Which Ethernet? Pick the top one, EM0, which is the Intel that, um, the Intel controller that the VirtualBox instance is going to provide. Press Enter. We do not need IPv6, so select no. We do need DHCP, so select yes here. And that'll give us an IP4 address. Type in a host name. Typically, I put devtrain, which is what I said the host was going to be, and then that's the only thing we change. Tab down to OK. Press Enter. Do you want it to function as a gateway? We're going to say no. Press Enter. You want INET D configured? Yes, we do. So arrow over to yes and press enter. It asks if you really mean it. It asks if you really, really mean it. Say yes for both of those. And then uh, arrow down to the first SSH entry, arrow over, and then hit delete. That'll uncomment the SSH TCP line. The other one is TCP6. We don't need that. So that's it. We can press escape to get to the menu. We just wait a sec and it shows up. Leave the editor is A, type A. Leave the menu and save changes is type A. And it asks, do you want to enable SSH? And you can say yes. Do you want to have anonymous FTP? No. Do you want to configure it as an NFS server? No. Do you want, how about an NFS client? No. How about customizing the settings? No. Would you like to set the time machine, uh, time zone? Yes. All right, if this time... Machine CMOS class is set to UCC, select it here, we can say yes, and we can select our country or our region and then um, go down and find 49 if you're in the United States, pick that, and then 11 for whatever zone, or whatever zone you're in, pick it, I'm in central, pick 11. CDT looks reasonable, it sure does. Do you have a mouse? Yes, I do. Let's enable it, and let's test it. So we click in here, move the mouse around. Sure enough, it works. Clicking really doesn't do much, so we press enter when we're done. And then we can exit. And we come to the user con confirmation required. You can say, would you like to browse the collection now? And we can say no. We don't need any additional packages that uh, they might want to install. So would you like to add an initial user account? We're going to say yes. And what kind of account? We're going to create a new user account. So press user, collect, select user, press enter. Type in the name. I use the same name on my system as I use on the VMs. Um, you're, you can do what you need to. Type your password twice. Enter your full name or enter a name that you want to use. Um, for member groups, we're going to add it to two. We're going to add the user to two different groups. Wheel is one, and we put a comma between these two groups, and operator is the other one. That'll let us start and stop things and do administrative stuff. We're going to say OK without being root, and then we're going to exit. Now we're going to set the uh, root password, just press enter here, type it in, it won't echo. Do we want to visit? The configuration menu, no, we don't. 
So we're ready to exit. We can arrow over to exit. Press exit. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. Be sure to remove the media. It already did so. Um, if you press the host key, which is the command key on Mac, or your right control key on FreeBSD or Linux, maybe the left control on Windows or something, who knows. Um, but anyhow, however you get your host key, that'll give you your mouse back. But you can see right here that the CD is grayed out. So it's already been removed. Click back in, press enter, and it's gonna go and reboot. Press the host key again, and in a second when it reboots, I'm gonna power it off right here, just to save me having to do this later. And I've installed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a snapshot. I click on the hamburger widget, find snapshots, find, take it, click take, call it, uh, you know, A4 installed or something. So if we screw something up in the next step, we can get back to this one. All right, gonna start it back, gonna start it up. Sorry. Wow, that snap stuff's really annoying. All right, console's up and running, but we're gonna actually use the terminal. So in the terminal window, we told it we wanted uh, SSH running on 2323, but if you can't remember that, or 3232, you can go to this um, network adapter here, click it, say network settings, advanced, port forwarding, 3232, uh, as a reminder. So SSH, Dash P, 3232, localhost. It's gonna tell us that it doesn't know this fingerprint yet, and that's okay, because it's never logged in there. So I'm gonna say, yep. Then I enter my password. Uh, oh, by the way, it, it said it added, um, it permanently added the localhost to the list of known hosts. All right, so we're in, we can be, Mm-hmm. Sorry about the beeps. Um, we want to become root. So SU dash. Log in with your um, root password. And we're now root. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to the console real quick. And we're going to mount the CD. So see how this is grayed out? The little icon for the CD. We're going to click it. Choose uh, choose a disk file, or actually it's in the list. But you can also choose it. But we'll pick the one that's in the list. Now it's mounted. It's uh, it's in the CD tray, effectively. So to mount it, all we're going to do is, as root, we're going to type mount, dash T, C, CD, um, 9660. And then the device, which is slash dev slash ACD, ACD0. And we're going to type, we're going to mount it to a folder called dist, which is on the root. And now we have these files mounted on root, uh, on dist. So we're going to move into installing the source code so that we can build kernel modules. And then we'll install two packages sudo and bash so that we can not have to log in as root all the time we can just sudo and we can also um, run bash as our shell which is a little has a few more features over the um, default born shell and the last thing we'll do before we reboot is we're turn off the auto boot delay or at least reduce it to practically nothing so three little things we're going to do we're going to install source so to install source there's a folder in disk called um, 8.4 release, and inside of there, there's a source folder. If we look in there, there's a gazillion files, but there's one, as you can see right here, called install.sh. We're going to make our window a little smaller. I think. No, we're going to move it up. 
because you guys are kind of not, I'm occluding it with my video. So there we go. <clears throat> Let's get rolling on this. So we can run the sh, we can run the install sh file by running it through sh. So sh install sh, tell us our options, it says you can install base or release or any of these uh, subcomponents, but you can also just say all. So we're going to say all. Do the same thing, we're just going to say all. It'll take just a sec to get these unzipped. And once they're unzipped, we can look at them in the source directory. There they are. They got their, they, they get there where they want to be. Uh, without them being here, without us, without us installing the sources, we couldn't build the kernel modules, as I said a minute ago. Um, next up, we're going to install some packages. So in the dist directory, there's a folder called packages. And inside of packages, there's a bunch of categories. This is a lot like the ports folder in a regular FreeBSD instance. But we're going to go into this one called all, because they're all there. And we'll see there's lots, which we can count them with word count. 911 packages on the DVD. This way we don't have to go, you know, find these packages or otherwise install them. If you're current with FreeBSD, you can just do package install, uh, the name of the package you want to install, and it'll go to the network and find it. But the 8.4 repository, I don't think it's active anymore. So this is the best option we have. Inside of here, there's a sudo, I'm sorry, there's a sudo grep for sudo. Um, there's a sudo package and a sudoku package, which we don't care about, and a bash package of some sort. There they are. So these two, we're going to get this one, and we're going to get this one. We're going to install them. And instead of using package install, we're going to use package add and the name of the, um, the zip file that we're, the tbz file that we want to install. So we're going to package add sudo and it's going to do it. It's not going to complain, and that's going to be good for us. And then we'll do bash, same story. And then we will cd to get out of this directory in case we want to write something. And then we will uh, run vi sudo, which is this, the, it pulls up vi or whatever your default editor is against the sudo rs file. We're looking for a wheel. We're going to enable anybody in the wheel group to log in without a password. So there's two lines, one with a password and one with that. We're going to uncomment by hitting X twice or, or by deleting the first two characters of the line. And that'll uh, allow us to log in, uh, sorry, it'll allow us to use sudo command without a password if we're in the wheel group. All right, I'm root right now. We're going to exit root. Now I am... Uh, and the regular user will. And at this point, we can do sudo ls to see if it's working. Yes, it's working, and it, it did what it did, and it didn't ask me for a password. So yay. The next thing I want to do is change the shell to bash, which we just installed, slash user, slash local, slash bin, slash bash. Uh, oh, sorry, bash. Local, user, local, bin, bash. And then who's going to be... Using the shell, that would be me, wsyn, hit enter, enter my password. And if I did, if it didn't uh, have any problems, it'll tell us that it updated the information and we can exit the shell and re-log in. And now we're in um, bash. Okay, that's good. Last thing we want to do before we reboot and uh, well, or shut down and take another snapshot is we're going to change the um, time, the boot, the auto boot delay parameter. And I know it's the auto boot delay parameter because I grepped auto boot out of slash uh, boot slash defaults slash loader.conf. And it is the delay in seconds before auto booting. So I know that's what it is. I'm going to copy it into my buffer there, and I'm going to edit boot slash loader dot conf. 
we'll do that as root sudo vi bootloader comp. I paste in my buffer and add the quote. And so now I've set auto boot underscore delay equal to quote one quote end quote. Write it, save it, check it, make sure I put the right file and all that. That's not it. <laughs> bootloader comp. Here we go. And uh, so now we can shut it down. So sudo shut down dash p now. All right, it's going to kill my SSH session. And in the background, this console is going to go away. All right, and if we were in the detail screen, we would see that this says dev train. It doesn't have any um, input or output going on. So it's ready for another snapshot. Go to snapshots, click take. We'll call this pre-dev. So now we can get back to either of the two states. We can get back to a fresh install of 8.4 or we can get back to we're ready for development state here. Um, the next step is to actually do some um, development work. So we're gonna start it up. This time we're going to go to details. We're gonna click and start headless. And if the CD is not attached, CD is attached, of course. Um, all right, so since it started off the CD, we can kill it at any time without hurting anything. I'm going to close, power it off. And we're gonna go into storage, and I'm gonna make a change. I've got options here. I could select the CD and I could eject it, remove this from virtual drive. But better for me is going into system, getting rid of the floppy, we don't need it selecting the optical drive and putting it lower in priority than the hard disk. That way it'll boot up the hard disk first and then maybe the optical disk if we wanted it to. Um, when we do make that change, start it up, headless again. This time it won't, uh, it won't pick up the CD, it'll boot off the disk and it should have a one second delay. So there's the main screen, it takes a second and then it kicks off. And we can watch what's going on here. Can't really read it, but we can at least watch it. And then when it gets to, I'm gonna clear the screen. Sorry about that loader thing. Um, when, it, when it comes to this part here, you can barely see it, but it says login. Um, you don't have to wait for it. You can just type your SSH command and wait and see what happens, but um, type your SSH command, login. We're ready. We're gonna do this as a regular user I'm gonna move this over a little bit, not too far. Okay, I'm gonna make a directory to work in. So I look, where am I? Are there any files here? No. Make dir dd-work, cd dd-work. And now I'm in an empty directory that I can do my work in. So I'm gonna create a hello.c file. And I'm gonna just copy and paste from over here and then I'll explain. Okay, so this, um, this file that the author's created is gonna include some header files that are required. The one that's interesting is system. It doesn't have an E, <laughs> just be aware of that. Um, instead of a main, your kernel module is gonna have this static int hello mod event. So static int hello underscore mod event um, function that it's going to define. And it's gonna have three parameters inside of here. Um, similar to um, command line parameters for command line program where it would have nrc and char star star rv. Um, this is sort of like that. So it has a module underscore t mod, but it is underscore underscore unused. Um, that's the macro. So it's, it's not actually using this first parameter. And then the second parameter is integer event. We're definitely going to use that. And then void pointer uh, rv, which is unused. So... Basically, we're just handling events here. We set an error code to zero. We create a switch for the event type, and we support two events types out of the get go mod underscore load and mod underscore unload. Anything else is going to generate uh, an event not supported um, error message, or it's going to have an error. So, mod load is going to do one thing, or one thing only. It's going to print hello world, and then it's going to be done with, the, with this case. 
And if it is mod unload is the event, then it's going to do goodbye cruel world and it's going to break. Otherwise, it'll return not supported and break. Either any way, it's going to return error, um, the error code that you have, and it's zero unless you break something. Um, and then there's a kind of a module header type of class that has to be defined. It's got the name of the module and the uh, handler for that module. Then we're going to use the um, declare module macro that um, the system provides and tell it, hey, this is hello, and this is hello mod, and here's all this other stuff. And that's really just template stuff for getting a, ba a bare bones kernel module defined, and we're good with it. We're going to right quit, and we're done with that. Next up, make file. We're going to create a make file, vi make file. Get inside of there. It's got three lines to it. And they are kmod equal, hello, that's the name of the module. Source is equal, hello.c, that's the source code for the module. And then there's a dot include for bsd.kmod.mk, which is the BSD, FreeBSD kernel module um, template functions and stuff. It's really helpful, so we're going to include it. And we're done with coding. So right now we've got two files in here. We're going to type make. It's going to work. Um, it's going to warn us about we're not changing from the original uh, folder. It's going to create an at link to user sys source sys. It's going to default. It's going to recognize our system as an i386 system. It's going to call cc with a bunch of uh, prim, uh, arguments against our hello.c file. Then it's going to link it against. Um, and it's going to link it and go to this hello KLD form. Uh, it's going to. I'm sorry, the CC file is going to create the object file. This linker thing is going to link this KLD thing in. And uh, that's gobbledygook. But um, at this point, don't worry about it. It's the it's part of the process. And then um, it's going to create an export sims and use awk to um, basically combine KL, uh, the KLD file, export sims and stuff, do some stuff and... It's a little bit of magic, but it, it's beautiful. It does work, um, and I don't know much about it, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Then um, the link editor is going to go and link up our KO file. I'm sorry, it's going to link up the KLD file um, and create a shareable kernel module called hello.ko, and um, it's going to strip the debug symbols out of it. That's it. That's kind of it. If we look in the directory, we see it created all these files. There's it. There you at the export sims. The hello.kld, the hello. Well, that's the end result. The hello.o file, machine file, and the the output is hello.ko in our two files. So that's it. It's ready. If we look at it long wise, then we see that the hello.ko file is you know a little over 3k, tiny thing. So we're ready to do um, the next thing, which is load it up. And the easy way to load it, or a way to load it rather sudo kld load. Well, let me let me show it to you wrong first. kld load. Hello. It says can't load hello. Okay, how about hello.ko? It says oops, it's not in the module path. How about hello? How about kld kld load dot slash hello.ko? Nope, can't do that. All right, fine. Let's run it as sudo since it's talking about operations. And voila, we get the output. We try other incantations, nothing's really going to work. You've got to run it as sudo because it's got to have permissions to insert a module into the kernel. You've got to have KLD load because that's what doesn't work. And then you have to tell it where it is, uh, the full path to the kernel module, unless you install the kernel module into the module path, which we're not doing. All right, so it printed hello world. And that hello world is a function of the um, load fun the, the kernel load function, KLD load, called the load function on your uh, hello.c kernel module. And that caused it to print the hello world. If we look at KLD stat, we can see that ID number two is, is reserved for our hello.ko module. It's 2000, whatever that is, and um, it's somewhere in memory. 
Okay, it's got the one reference to it at the moment. All right, so it's loaded in memory. If we back up the process a little bit and go KLD unload, give it a path, it calls the unload function, and it's gone from the status. All right, the fact that we included the BSD KMod file allows us to do another little uh, fun sort of thing, and that is we can do make load. If we do make load, it's going to error out. Again, we don't have permissions, um, but it'll tell us what it's going to trying to do. And this is the way that it called um, the load function. And then it tells us it couldn't do it because it doesn't have permissions, and it exited with an error code one, and there's a stop. So when we call make load, we get a little more info. It's good stuff, so we can call sudo make load. Now it loaded it. It tells us that it loaded it as ID number two. And if we KLD stat, sure enough, it's the same effect. And backing that up, we can do sudo make unload. And it runs it, says goodbye cruel world, and KLD stat will show us it's gone. So that's a simple kernel module developed in end. We could install it. Probably don't want to do that for this. It's kind of a very minimal kernel module, but let's shut down and take another snapshot. So you just shut down, dash P now, kills the SSH session, and back over, wow, back over in this world, we can see it shutting down. And before you know it, we'll get the um, dev train showing it. There it is. We go into snapshots, take our last one. We go to, we make sure we're, ooh, I wonder, yeah. <laughs> we take another one here. We call it uh, um, ready to dev, ready dev or something. Uh, no, uh, first module built, be descriptive, sure why not. Say okay, and now we know where we are, and we're at the current state. So that's it. Thanks. Um, be sure to leave comments if you have questions or comment uh, other comments on. Listen to them all. Thanks. Good.